here in the city of Tacoma, Washington, where the summers are cool and the winters mild, the giant tent cathedral of Oral Roberts has been brought. Another stop in the Reverend Roberts' worldwide campaign to win souls for Christ. Reverend Roberts was invited to the city of Tacoma by pastors of sponsoring churches. One of several documentary films in the Tacoma area, it was not rehearsed nor prearranged in any way. The title of tonight's sermon is Christ's Mastery Over Fear and the Fearful. Gentlemen, it's my happy privilege and pleasure to present the man that God has raised up with a message for your deliverance, the Reverend Oral Roberts. <laughs> Oral, our good friend, United States Congressman Thor C. Tollefson is here. I know you'd like to meet him. He's a real friend of our work, Congressman Tollefson. Let's give Wonder him a welcome as he wonderful, comes. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you. Laurel, it's wonderful to see you again. I believe the last time I saw you was in Washington, D.C., in that's, your office. That's right, and I was happy to have you come in and visit with me. You right. know, I presented our problems to you, and you gave some very fine advice to me, and I took it, and now we're on... A great number of television stations over the country. And may I say that I've watched a great many of them all with a tremendous amount of satisfaction. Thrilled with the knowledge that more and more people are coming to the realization and the understanding that in this old world of ours torn by conflict and confusion and contention, that the problems of that old world are not going to be solved by the wisdom of man alone, but only through the faith their faith in God through whom all wisdom flows. I believe that. Or may he bless your work and continue to bless it uh, in the years to come. Thank you and God bless you. Let's give him a real hand. Now please, would you turn with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 8. I wish to read one verse, Luke 8, 50. But when Jesus heard it, he answered saying, Fear not. Believe only, and she shall be made whole. Now, I want to speak to you on Christ's mastery over fear and the fearful. You know, fear is the first thing we feel when we come up against something that we cannot cope with. When we get in trouble, or we get in danger, the first thing we feel is fear. One of the most fascinating experiences that Christ had with fear was with Jairus. Now, Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue, and he had a little daughter that, that uh, became very ill and eventually reached the point of death when she was only 12 years old. He ran up to Christ and said, Lord, my little daughter, I at the point of death, come and lay thy hands upon her that she may be healed and live. About that time, a servant from Jairus' home rushed up and cried, Jairus, why trouble the master any further? Your little girl has just passed away. Well, you can imagine. Here was Jairus, believing for the healing of his little 12-year-old daughter. He had Christ with him, and they were on the way home to raise the child up from its sick bed. When the servant says, it's no use, the child has just died. A knot of fear came in Jairus' stomach. A blinding flash struck his forehead, and he began to turn deathly white, as any parrot would, upon the news of such a thing as that. When Jesus spoke and said, Fear not, fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. J.B. Phillips' translation of this statement is that Jesus said to Jairus, Now, now, now don't be afraid. Just, just go on believing. She'll be all right. You know, that's the voice you and I need to hear today. 
Now, don't be afraid. Just keep on believing. Everything's going to be all right. He knew because he was master. He was master over fear. He was master over death. Yes, he's master today. Now, don't be afraid. Just go on believing and everything will be all right. And Jairus caught the pitch of his words and believed God. And all the fear drained out of his being. And he took Jesus on to his house and he touched the child and raised her from the dead. Men and women, do you know that Jesus is master over fear? You say, how is he? If you will just go on believing, if you will just believe God, you will find that believing God is the only power that can absolutely conquer fear. And it will do it. Another illustration of this is when Jesus gave that famous slogan, you can't go under for going over. When he was uh, going to heal Legion, the demoniac of Gadara, he uh, got into a boat with his disciples and said, let us go over under the other side of the sea. He went behind a part of the ship, uh, found a pillow, put his head upon it, wrapped himself in the broad arms of faith and love, went to sleep and slept like a baby. The disciples sailed away. Pretty soon a great storm struck. The winds began to blow, the waves to rage, and pretty soon the timbers of the boat were popping and the disciples were rubbing elbows with death. And in the terror of the storm, they forgot. They forgot that God was on board. They actually forgot that Jesus was in that ship. And forgetting he was there, knowing the terror of the storm and that they had little chance of surviving at an hour like that, they went to pieces. They became so afraid that they screamed, we're alone, nobody cares. And finally, someone remembered Christ. They ran back and shook him awake, crying, Master, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And significantly, the storm couldn't wake Jesus, for he was not afraid of it. The thunder could not startle him. The lightning could not surprise him. The blowing of the wind and the raging of the water could not upset him because he had mastery over all them. The only thing that could awake him was the cry of despair of his people. He arose, walked through the water-laden boat to the bow of the ship, turned his face up to the wind and spray, and while the wind blew his garment, he raised his hand and said, Peace, and hushed the sea to sleep, and there was no more storm. Men and women, Jesus Christ can ride the storm of fear in your heart and hush it to sleep. He can so change your thinking and believing that you will lead a, a triumphant more than conqueror's life through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you believe it, say amen. amen. And he, he finally said to his disciples, where is your faith? He said, gentlemen, you had the faith. Why didn't you use it? Why didn't you believe God? And when I get afraid, I say to myself, Oral Roberts, where is your faith? J.B. Phillips' translation of this statement, where is your faith, is, oh, you little faith. Oh, you little faiths. He said, he said to Peter, oh, you little faith, what would you do with your faith? You got scared. You were bound by fear. You went to pieces. You little faith, why didn't you remember to believe God? Oh, how little faiths we are when we are prayed because we have become little faiths. Listen, men and women, God wants us to be a big faith. Isn't that right? And the stronger our faith is in God, the less fear we'll have to face in our lives. Jesus, Jesus is master over fear. Christ is master over the fearful. And this is interesting to me. Not only can Christ subdue the fear in Oral Roberts' breast. But he can change me. He can change me from a fearful person to a courageous, triumphant, sunshiny person. That's the thing I like. Jesus can do it to the human. He not only has power over the fear, but he has power over the fearful. He changes us. Glory to his name. Do you believe it? Amen. Will you reverently bow your heads, please? And now I want every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl who believes in my prayers 
and you want my prayers that Christ may become your personal Savior, that Jesus may come into your heart and save your soul. Take the first step, please, in his name right now and raise up your right hand quickly. Up high, up high with your hands, up high with them. Hold them there, please. If you're sincere and you really mean it and you want me to pray, take the second step and stand on your feet right now for my prayer. Please stand. And they're getting up all over this audience. That's wonderful. Remain standing. Every head bowed except the people standing and you look on me. I'm so glad you're standing. This is God's hour to save your soul. We have a place in front of me here at the platform where you may come up and stand, and I'm going to pray for you. Do not sit back down, but come down the aisle right now and stand before me for prayer. Come on. Come on. Oh, they're coming down every aisle. Oh, that's wonderful. And say, you there in your home or your room or wherever you are, if you can see or hear, will you, will you give your heart to God? Will you be saved? Will you let the Christ who's in my heart come into your heart? Will you give your heart to Christ and make him your personal savior? In a moment, I'm going to pray with these many hundreds. Let me also pray with you. And there, Christ will save you and come into your heart. Raise your right hand. Be identified with raising your hand. All of you together, repeat this prayer, and you too. Ready? Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Come into my heart and save me. Save me from my sins. And now, Lord, I believe that Christ is the Son of God, and I receive him as my personal Savior to live for him as a Christian forever. Amen. If you meant that, say amen. Why don't we step over here, please? I want to ask this lady here on my right. Um, well, who are you? I'm Miss Old. Did Laura you Old. Did you receive Christ? Yes, I did. And you never were saved before in your life? No, I was in church, but that's all. In other words, you went to church, right. but you did not really know Christ. No, I never. You came up tonight, and did you receive him? Yes, I did, before I got here. Even as you came down yes, the aisle, you were before. surrendering your life to Christ? Yes. How do you feel? I feel wonderful. Wonderful. Tell me where you live. In Milton. Do you have a family? Yes, I do. My son gave his life to Christ. Was it in this campaign yes. he was converted? Yes. How old is your son? Thirteen. This should make you the, about the happiest woman in the world, does it? Yes. Yes. Do you intend now to go to church and really serve yes. God? Praise God. Thank you very much. Now, did you pray that prayer? If you prayed that prayer right where you are and you were sincere, I know that Jesus saved your soul. And now then, live a different life. Live Christ's life. Be a real Christian. And please, let me hear from you. I want to know. If you will write me, I will send you free of charge a little booklet titled How You May Know You Are Saved. Did you know the most important thing in the world is to know that you are saved? And this is one of my sermons, which I give in every meeting, How to Know You're Saved. And it's helped thousands of people. I have it in booklet form, and if you'll write and ask for it, I'll send it to you free and postpaid. Write me, Oral Roberts, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Let me send it to you free. My address again is Oral Roberts, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Write me right away so I can send it to you quickly. And now, I'll be back in a few moments to pray for the healing of the sick. You friends now are going to our prayer room where you may kneel and pray till you know Christ has come into your heart. And I'll be back in a few moments. I come now to offer prayer to God in faith for the healing of the sick. 
I know that many of you are here to receive help through faith in God. And I know that you believe in medical science just as I do and members of our team. We believe that God heals in many ways. We also believe that God hears and answers prayer. Don't you? Amen. I'm ready now to pray. I want you people in the audience to believe God for yourself, you people in the prayer line to believe God. I want you there in your room to believe God. God heals. I don't. I'm ready now to pray. Are you Mrs. Will you say your name? I know. I know. Are you from this city? Yes. 6813 East, East B Street, East. Tacoma. That's right. Member of the Christian Church. Yes. Your neck has been broken? Yes. You have a punctured lung? Yes. And let's see, you have a and border I... and asthma. Yes, and the doctors say I can't be cured. Mrs. Ilo, do you sincerely believe God can help you through faith? I know he can. Do you wish me to lay my hand upon you? I do. I know I can get well. You know it. I know it. Father, we ask that the broken neck be healed and made normal. Oh, Heal! You. Heal! You. But thy spirit. Miss Ilo, move your head. Move, move it like this now. Good. Father, may this growth on her neck be taken away. Heal it by thy spirit. Mrs. Ilo, you have remarkable faith. Put your hand on your neck. Your flesh is flabby and loose. Just when do you think that happened? Just then. Just then. I hope he cures me from my belt up. I have an awful hard time breathing most awful of the time. Awful hard time breathing. Put your hand on your nostrils, please. Father, may... Mrs. Ilo, go ahead and breathe. You can do it. What? I can. You can, can't you? I can. Oh, praise God for that. God bless you. Thank God you. bless you. You're welcome. Lincoln Park Christian Church, Roy Cruz of Tacoma, Washington, rheumatoid arthritis, in intestinal nervousness, chest and throat disorders. Roy, are you, are you very afflicted with rheumatoid arthritis? Yes, I am. It's a serious thing then. It is. How does it affect you most? All oh, my arms. It hurts all the time, and in my hips, and my leg, and my Are feet. you employed? Yes, I am. And of course it affects you. Yeah, well, I used to drive truck, and I had to quit driving because it was too hard to turn the wheel. Roy, what gave you faith to come here? Well, I've been, I've been saved a number of years, and I've been watching your program for many, many years. As long as you've been on television, I should say, and I've been waiting for this t moment. You've been waiting for this I hour? I sure have. Well, you're here. What do you intend to do about it? Well, let you pray for me and see if God can heal me. I know he can. Jesus? Roy, I don't think a prayer is necessary. I touched you. I felt the Lord. You seem to have faith. Move your arms. Raise them up and down. Flex your muscles. That's right. Sir? This arm don't hurt him. I didn't think so. Before I finished my prayer, I, it seemed to me that God did something for you. I guess that's right. It's God. How do you feel? Good. Good. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Who did that for you? Well, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Absolutely. God bless you. Bless you. Roy. Brother, you've got Thank a grip you. of that hand now. Right. Amen. God bless you, Roy. <laughs> yes. Now, you had some difficulty getting over here, Mrs. Thompson. Yes, I did. A friend of mine that um, told me about you and uh, brought me here. Yes. You are from the Church of England and you're from yes. Vancouver Island, British Nanaimo, Columbia. Nanaimo, sir. Oh, I see. You have rheumatoid arthritis in hips, legs, shoulders, hands, arms, and spine. And, uh, and Yes, it started as rheumatism and the last 10 years it's been rheumatoid arthritis. Mrs. Thompson, since you've been here, what have you been thinking? Oh, you couldn't imagine. 
I came here on Friday. I went to the fair tent Friday night, and God spoke to me there. I know how you feel, sister. Now, Miss Thompson, we're ready to pray. Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, God, hear thy servant's prayer. Heal, heal. May I hold, take your hands a minute, please? I raise your limbs up and down and do it with faith. Here's the bad side, sister. Over here, I felt that. Jesus, heal. Sure, it's better. I felt it too. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah. I can't. You just kneel if you... She wants you to help her a minute. She hasn't knelt in years. You're, you're kneeling now. It's an act of worship on her part. It's quite an experience, wasn't it? Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, the smile on your face, sister. People, I wish you could see this. Would you turn around? Let the people see. Just let them see that smile. Praise God. God bless you as you go now. We hope and pray you'll get completely well. What did you say? I can squeeze your hand. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> How do you do? Uh, who are you folks? This is Parmley, and this is my daughter, Barbara Jo. Where are you from? Seattle, Washington. You're a member of the Highland Covenant Church? Yes, sir. She has loss of hearing and ear infection in the right ear. She's operated on, and she's had the infection since. Now, which ear is bad, Miss Parmley? The right ear. She's deaf in the right ear? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Does she believe she will be healed? Oh, she surely does. Well, you talk like you believe, too. Oh, I do. Stand her right up here, Brother Deweese, if you will, please. Oh, God, we ask for the healing of an infected ear. We ask for the healing of the deafness in the ear. Heal it, good master. In Christ's name. Now, Barbara, uh, Brother Deweese, help her back down, please. I want to test that ear. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Parmley, would you put your arm around, put your finger in her left ear? Put it in there tightly, please. Now, if the Lord has helped her ear, she'll be able to hear. If he has not, she won't be able to hear. Uh, Turn her a little from me so she can't see my lips. Barbara, can you hear me? Yes. Barbara, how old are you? Nine. Barbara, will you repeat these words? I love you, God, with all I my heart. I love you, God, with all my heart. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Shh. Say, I love you, God. I love you, God. I thank God. I thank God. I can hear. I can hear. I can hear now. I can hear now. Faith in God. Faith in God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, Barbara, did you, did you come up here believing you would be healed? Yes. What do you think now? I'm healed. You're healed. How does it feel to be healed? Wonderful. Wonderful. Mrs. Parmley, do you think your child can hear normally? Yes, I know she can now. Now, Barbara, tell me how you feel exactly. I feel that like God's healed me. God bless you. May I shake your hand? Wish you Godspeed. And Mrs. Parmley, God bless you and your church. Thank you. You're welcome. While I feel the anointing of God upon me, I wish to reach forth and pray for you there in your home or wherever you can hear me or see me. 
Would you get ready, please? Audience, please bow your heads in reverent prayer. All the pastors of the sponsoring churches, bow your heads in, in reverent prayer. Oh, Father, I ask thee to let thy healing power go to this place just as it is here in this 10th cathedral. As you have helped people here through prayer, help these people through prayer. Grant it through the name of Christ. And now, my brother, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I reach forth my hand to pray for you. Be healed. Be healed through Jesus Christ. My sister, God is there. There's no distance in prayer. Oh, God, heal. May thy presence fill this entire place. Raise the people up in it. Raise the people up in this place and heal them so completely that they will be absolutely well through faith in God. Amen and amen. Brother Deweese, I would like to, to, to say a word before we continue. We've been praying for a lot of people in the service, and there are many more to pray for. But listen to me. There's nothing wrong in your life that a little more faith in God won't cure. That's what we need today, a little more faith in God. And I'd like to tell you something. These people have made a special effort. Many of them have sacrificed. They have come, some from distances. They've done something about their need. They're here in this campaign believing God. But not everyone can come to our meeting. For various reasons, not everyone can come in person. But everyone can write. Many people are writing us every day. There isn't a day that passes that, that, that I don't spend time in earnest believing prayer that God will save and heal the people who write their requests to us. If you cannot come to our meetings, we invite you to write to us. My address is Oral Roberts, Tulsa, Oklahoma. We believe through prayer, through faith in God, we can help you out. 